Hi, is this Tim? This is Tim. All right, well, let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is a drummer, he is a singer, he is known for the band Ohio Express, and lovingly, we also call him a gearhead. We're very welcome, very excited to welcome the one and only Tim Corwin to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's a true testament to your roots in knowing uh, your band is named the Ohio Express. You grew up and lived in Ohio, and you still live there. Yeah, I've, yeah I'm still in the hometown I grew up in, although <laughs> I've stayed everywhere over the years. But, you know, when it comes to coming home, it's uh, Lexington, right in the middle of Ohio, in the valley. Right. Well, I've got to ask you a question, because I promised somebody I would. Uh, okay. Coming from Ohio, it's the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And they've had a little bit of controversy lately, and I'd like to know how you feel about the fact that Ohio Express is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and what do you think about the controversy that's going on, and a lot of people's complaining they were supposed to be putting people like Pat Benatar in, they're putting Whitney Houston, they're putting rappers like Notorious uh, B.I.G. What do you think about the Rock and Roll Hall uh, of Fame right there in your own uh, area? Well, I am in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah, the Ohio, Ohio Band Division, the Outsiders, uh, the Lemon Pipers, Ohio mm -hmm. Express. And uh, I've done benefits up there for uh, uh, Mr. Stewart, who's the CEO of the fa uh, hall. I think we did a fundraiser in the public hall where the Beatles and the Rolling Stones were on that stage. I thought, man, I can't wait to wow. play this one. And I actually used my back line in that job from L.A. out there with you guys. Fantastic. Um, and uh, But, uh, you know, I don't know. The rap thing, I'm, you know, of course, I'm an old fart with good old rock and roll. Yeah. That doesn't impress me at all. So it can go where, fall where it may. But everybody else, Pat Benatar, whatever, I don't know. I don't pay much attention to it, really. I don't really either. There's so many groups that, that's not in. I'm glad that you got some kind of recognition from them. You know, yeah, people, yeah, I'm down there with the, and uh, you know who else is down there with me? It's Peter Frampton, because he moved to uh, Cincinnati. Wow. wow. I didn't know. Oh, Peter, you couldn't even recognize him anymore. He's almost bald. No, he had, he was bald. That was a couple years ago we did this fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, it's, look at this guy. <laughs> 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 but, you know, they called uh, called me up. Uh, Chris Cleveland's only about an hour and a half from here. Yeah. It's a good time up there, and it's, it's a cool place. And now I get in the Hall of Fame free, too, by the way. Well, well gee, there's something out of that. <laughs> I mean, hey. Yeah. Maybe, maybe since you get in free, you can sneak my friends the monkeys in there and put a plaque on the wall. And, <laughs> no, that, yeah, I can get you in. I that, got the pool. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, we wanted to mention before we get into the Ohio Express, because there's a, a long story there, uh, we called you a gearhead. Uh, why are you a gearhead? What do you do? And uh, your passion is restoring gears in a way. I mean, you, you restore cars and motorcycles, right? Yeah, I've, I, you know, I've always had some British toys, you know, even in high school when we were Sir Timothy and the Royals. But anyway, yeah, I got into that. When I got off the road for yeah, back in 73, I, I was lost. And I said, well, I have these toys. And I moved out to a farm way out of town just to collect myself. It was like really, you know, different from moving from New York back to Lexington. And uh, and I just, you know, I thought, well, you know, I could start a garage down here and call it the bucket seat. Oh, I like and, that. And uh, my wife at the time said, yeah, you know, why don't you do that? I tried working for a couple of people. That didn't work after being in business and music. I couldn't handle it. And so mm -hmm. I, I started a car repair. And you would be surprised all the old farms around here and, and have Austin Healy's and Jaguars sitting in. Many of these old farmers would go, hey, you know, I got one of them. And <laughs> I got to know my neighbors and started working on toys and, and did ever since in between all the time I've been playing so, so you're, you're there, you're there in in the Midwest, right there in God's country, and uh, people that get really, you know, all for America. Are they saying to you, well, "What do you do with all these foreign cars around?" <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Lexington, Ohio, uh, right up the road from me was a guy named Les Gribling who started the Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, which is a national renowned course. If you pull that up and look at that, it's big time. Everybody's been there. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's a major facility. And so he had a BMC dealership. He was selling Jags and MGs and stuff yeah. way back in the, uh, like, 1959 on. Mm. And so they're nothing uh, to see, uh, you know, some British cars flying around this area. Right. Uh, let alone in Columbus, Ohio, all your, uh, you know, your Fiat, your Mercedes, and, uh, Volvo, everything. You know, it's pretty prevalent. It's actually the, uh, I've sent a lot of my cars that I have sold. Uh, uh, three or four Triumphs, two E-type Jags around L.A. and, uh, and um, Ventura. I've sent a few there. 
uh, in my old Porsche. It's out there now. No, Wait, which pays know. better, collecting cars or rock and roll? <laughs> <laughs> I got a love for both, but you know, there's nothing like the magic of being on stage. Yeah. Right. You know, when I got off the road, I thought, what am I going to do with myself? And I was in limbo for a while, and I started having dreams. I played somewhere, and it just haunted you so bad. You mm. remembered them. You woke up with them. It wasn't like a dream that was cool when you couldn't recollect it. I remembered everything, and I knew then. I thought, you know what, I got to I can't quit this. And so I played just in the tri-state area for a while with some, with some friends and a couple of the original members. And uh, then I got hooked up uh, with uh, Mars Talent, uh, with Mitt Wendy and trademarked the name back in 1990. And, uh, you know, she pretty well took good care of me and still am with a number of agents, but she was the big one. She was the one that got me, you know, back into it heavy. And... Uh, and I, you know, and I'll tell you, I'm glad because of the guys that had quit this. They don't know what they're missing because of the new equipment, the, the technology, the digital abilities. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you can finally sound good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm never surprised, or, or I am surprised. I shouldn't be surprised at what I hear coming out of the Ohio Express, and, and particularly from you. But uh, we've got Amazon Music, and I was playing, you know, some of your songs last night. Yeah. And it surprised me. All of a sudden, I heard the Scooby Doo theme. Yeah, I re-recorded that for the cartoon show. Uh, so I'm with Sony Music Group. Uh, I'm out there with you, uh, San, San, uh, San, or San Juan Records. I'm with them in New York. I just had my Christmas tree did with them, and I'm, Joey D was with me on that in Starland. But out there, I'm with uh, Cleopatra Records in yeah. uh, Santa Monica. And uh, you'll get that download from uh, Cleopatra. There's all, and all our new uh, stuff, I've uh, had an agent for the last 15 years in, in Cologne, Germany, and been doing East German tours, and they wrote all this new material for us. I asked Candy, I'm, she's my agent for the Mid-Ohio, if she's sending the new stuff. Oh, I sent all the old hits. I go, and those have been re-recorded. I don't know what she sent you. but Anyway, yeah, I've, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a hoot. I'm loving every minute of it. And it's kind of like, I, I kind of feel like the, uh, the new Tony Bennett. At the <laughs> and, well, you know, you're, you're able to do different things. I mean, you were kind of typecast in bubblegum, but I even heard you doing Achy Breaky Heart. Uh, something like that. You know, also, <laughs> even on our covers, I've, I've loved doing uh, a Brandy, uh, even Vehicle, you know, uh -huh. on the Ides of March. I mean, we, we do some, I have two keyboard players that, but in my band that's here in Ohio. Now, you know, a lot of times I get out of here and I backline. You know, that's a, you, my backline out there with you guys for the last 10, 15 years is Bo Donaldson and the Haywards. Oh, oh. no, we interviewed work, them. They're, they're great, yeah. Yeah, I work with Bo and Ron Dante and... Uh, you're, you're yeah. talking about the best guys. I mean, I, I've talked to all of them, and they're wonderful people. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah well, they're my buddies. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, you know, the music business is cool because I got friends everywhere, and it's like, you know, we may be months apart now and then, even Gary Lewis. You know? Yeah. And yet, you know, from all the years we've known each other, it's just like old hat. You sit down, you talk about what's going on at home. Uh, it's uh, And that's like it with Bo and Ron. Um, it's a ball, you know. Right. It's just—it's a, a whole different family. It's a whole different love. Now I wanted to find out because we had on uh, lead singer of Doctor Hook and Medicine Show, and uh, he had a situation to where uh, Ray, when he went on his own, he had to license a name out to him because he had owned the name. Now you own the name Ohio Express. Exactly how that come about? Well, that came about because when I got uh, approached by uh, Mars Talent, which uh, Wendy from Mars, she's a CEO which is the oldest agency and biggest on the East Coast, she said, Tim, we're going to have to trademark the name because then I, can, I know who I'm booking. And I want you because you're the, you're the real thing. And here we found there was a band in, uh, I don't know, in, in Japan. I think there was one in Florida. You know, people calling themselves. And so, you know, they're out there after that, all this time goes by. And somebody does, if they're not picking up, we're going to be these guys. Well, you know, I shut down a few of them. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a quite the uh, procedure, you know, to trademark. It's a three-way conversation between your your attorney here in Mansfield and an attorney in New York and then Washington, D.C. And it cost some money, but I did it, and it's the best thing I ever did. Now, how did that go, though, with the record label? Because, you know, back in the, the, the 60s and stuff, the record label pretty much owned the groups, owned the names. So did you have to yeah, go back well, to the they, record label? The, the label was, uh, was Kama Sutra at first, and then, uh, then it went, went with... Um, oh God, you got me too late on a Saturday. Um, <laughs> well, the big one, Buddha. Buddha, Buddha. yeah, I was yeah. going to say Buddha. Yeah, but uh, they don't own the name, you know, and nobody owns the name until you trademark. And when you trademark, you have to, f it's a federal ID. You've got, you know, you've got bookkeepers. You've got a, you've got attorneys for the, it's a corporation, you know, when you trademark. You, you, you form a corporation. And um, so 
so you know that that means you got to report to the federal government you know every year mm -hmm. and that's what those guys weren't doing and uh, hoping that nobody in you know, any of us in the band originally would be smart enough to take over and trademark the name mm -hmm. and you know and because it was there for the grab well let me I explain this remember. kind of the way my listeners think because they're in the movies a lot uh where movies yeah. pop culture tv it's kind of like the public domain thing on a movie right i mean nobody yeah, yeah right. almost in a way i trademarked for the name of the music playing band and all the uh you know uh, uh sales of goods you know mm -hmm. t-shirts mugs records cds you know and that's what you got to do mm -hmm. and uh and uh, it's the best thing I ever did because I've even shut down the limited in Germany for selling some kind of T-shirts with our name on. And my one uh, chairman here was uh, not the chairman, but a secretary of the corporate friend of mine, a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Oh man, he went after them. I go, you know, Ernie, you know that cost. Uh, we have uh, attorneys in London for right. the uh, for the European episode. And uh, and I said that was a couple grand just to do something that was actually putting our name out there. I said that was a you know that was dumb. <laughs> and let them put you know. But if somebody comes up there and says they're the band, then we have to go after. Them. Right. I had that right. trouble now locally sometimes with some of these original members here. You know what they don't word out what, what they're doing right, and you know it's, it's you know it's, it's, I trade might cost money. It's it's, uh, it's my supper table. It's my you know I need it, and I've offered these other guys way back when I tr when I trademark to be a shareholder to be a part. If you turn it down, then you lose. You know? Right. Well, it always seems like there's always one member of a group that seems to be more yeah. loyal and dedicated. It just keeps the mantra going and everything, you know. And I, I guess that's you. I guess recently you you had even a situation. Uh, we got a, a DM from uh, your representative, and and she said that there was even a CD put out with Ohio Express on it. And well, no, it's a local thing. No, it's peanut stuff. You know, okay. it's not like I'm I'm with Sony out of. Uh, uh, San Juan Records. I just did my Christmas CD. What that's cool. If you want to Spotify, Amazon, download Twenty Christmas Greats, and pull up Ohio Express on that end of it, and you'll see it. It's me with uh, uh, Joey D and the Starlighters. Joey D is a Jersey friend of mine. Of course. And out of the twenty songs on there, I got twelve. Oh. <laughs> well, there you, wow! There you go. Yeah. All studio stuff in New York, really very jazzy, like Michael Blue, Blay, Frank Sinatra stuff. It took me two years to do uh, the the twelve songs. How did you feel about finally uh, coming around and doing that? Because I had heard that initially you weren't crazy about doing a Christmas album. Yeah, I thought it would be kind of corny. And then you <laughs> stop and think about it. This is a privilege for everybody in the business. It's a, it's a bucket list for any band. And I got to thinking, what a privilege this was for Mickey Yannick, who's the CEO of San Juan Records Studios in New York, and, and, and set me up with this. And he's my agent now also in Florida with Seaspray Entertainment. And I, I didn't realize, you know, how heavy and good. Uh, and I'll tell you, when you do um, uh, Let It Snow, I had a, a couple of them songs. I mean, we would go back and forth between the studio and my studio. My keyboard player has in his basement. I got tears in my eyes doing some yeah. of them Christmas songs. I mean, I'm a real softy anyway. But, I you know, I thought, wow, this is really beautiful because it just took you back in time. And uh, it was the coolest thing I think I've ever done so far is my Christmas CD. <laughs> well, we, really? we definitely have to be adding that to our database because we do a thing that we call Christmas yeah. at the drive-in because we're drive-in and, yeah. and pop culture. Right. And, and people love it because we love, and some people call it novelty. I don't call it novelty. Uh, rock and rollers from the 50s and 60s doing or 70s doing Christmas songs. You know, everybody, like you know Chuck Berry and, and even up yeah. to the Partridge family. And everybody. It, it's cool. Uh -huh. Very cool. Yeah. Brenda Lee rocking around the Christmas tree. Yeah. I'm the 3,001 guy to do it. <laughs> 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 so that, and there's every, and I've got looking, then you look at all these bands. Everybody's done their right. Christmas tree. If you haven't done that, you you know, you haven't done full circle yet, you know. And so I, by golly, I made it. And uh, yeah, if you can't get it through there, have candy up. Uh, you, you'll download it off of, uh, off the, you'll find it on Spotify. Okay. And right. it's really cool. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's very, very jazzy. It's, it's, we have some major studio musicians in New York. And so it's, uh, it's some of the songs were so jazzy that if you didn't have Christmas words to it, you would swear that's not Jingle Bells. <laughs> but, you know, when you get the music and the words together, you go, wow. And it took me a lot of, God bless my uh, my one keyboard player, Warren a. Sawyer. He's like a producer for me. So he's my, you know, if I go, I go with him if I can't take the whole band. And he, you know, he'd point to me, you got to come in here. you got to double it there. And I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> is this but, kind of uh, like therapy for you in a way? Because let, let me tell you why I'm saying that. Okay, you yeah. know, a lot of people you've mentioned are your friends. We've had them all on. And one that we've had on was Ivan Brown of the Lemon Pipers. 
he, yes, Ivan, I know him. Yeah, but he hated what he did so much with the bubblegum yeah. thing. He yeah. just he well, despised it. And, and I, I don't think you know. I think the tag was that, uh, that, that it was really not bubblegum. When you you know here again, like I, I took out all that cheese voice. If I don't know what Candy sent you, but if the new downloads, you get it off Cleopatra Records. Uh-huh. Okay, and then you're going to find uh, some of the covers on there. You know, like Brandy, uh, it's a march. Uh, but but when we do our songs, all our hits. We dropped it a key, and I do totally all the vocals now because we had studio help on them hits, and the writer Joey Levine. And I said, you know, get the clothespin off the nose, get the cheese out of this bubble gum. And, we're gonna drop it down. <laughs> and when we play out this stuff live, it kicks butt. And I think that was probably what Ivan's get, is this thing about, and uh, because they labeled it that, and it was okay playing because you get your you could get your heart into it playing it live, and then somebody calls it that, and I'm going, it's not really that. Yeah. Who was the who was the uh, the ding dong that thought of that term, but but I guess you know we had it was it was a label and you went with it. Well, it was a label and, and it was Buddha. Yeah. Everybody thinks everybody on Buddha was bubblegum. I don't think Melanie was bubblegum. You know? No, no. You know, I'm thinking of the uh, oh uh, oh the one band that was with us with the Cast Castnet group that was on Buddha. Um, uh, give me, give me good love. I'll yeah, spend. Uh, oh, well, what's her name? I mean, they, that was all good heavy rock. Yeah, for band. sure. You know, we, we were out, we, we were on the road doing those songs. We were listening to Vanilla Fudge, the Little Rascals. <laughs> I mean, we were, you know, we were really into it. I mean, that was some doggone good. You know, that '60s rock and roll was, you know, driving stuff. Right. Right. And when you play it out live now, you drop it down, you do everything just like I'm the new producer. All these hits, re-recorded everything, and I'm going. This is the way that we finally wanted this to sound. So what's new now is really what we sound like, and and what you know, I always wanted to sound like. Right. So I'll, I just took over. Gonna, I took over and did it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I'm going to ask you, though, to take us through kind of the history of Ohio Express because I don't think a lot of people realize the ups and downs that you guys had. And starting out, I mean, you guys started out as Sir Timothy and the Royals, but before that there was actually like another foundling group called the Rare Breed, right? That's right. That's right. We got their tracks from Jeff and Jerry, and that was our first, uh, and, and redid the vocals on it. And recovered it with the, with the music, and and that's a, con- a like a compilation of what they did on our first hit, and it was on that was Kama Sutra, I mean uh, Cameo Parkway, mm-hmm. and uh, but it was you know uh, we just overran the vocals and, and added on that was Dale Powers uh, singing on that one, my lead guitar player back then, one of the guys I offered to be a part of this, and then it's kind of you know one of the things you run into they don't want to do it now they do but it's too late but anyway feel like Donald Trump here but anyway <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah yeah that was ups and downs but that uh, it, it hit went nuts and then of course Yummy was next and boy that was you know and that was uh, and working that with Joey Levine we doing the back line vocals and he did the cheese part on top of that because he wrote it and then I thought oh my god and then they then they go well I want you to we all took a turn at making a lead vocal track on it I did Dean my bass player and uh and uh, I think it's a smear of a you know of a couple voices like they did back then overlay, and uh, and that's and that's why it sounds so you know ying, 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 and I thought you know what if that's if this is what bubblegum is it's that cheese sound so yeah. as soon as I can get back back on in the, in that studio mm-hmm. and when I trademark this name I'm gonna make it kick butt and Yumby is a is a great song played out live Chewy Chewy straight Mercy Mercy and then our producer in the Cologne who has new stuff. Uh, I don't know if Candy sent you that. Maybe we can, if you get back with her, I'll have her do it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's all European releases. We didn't release them here. But it follows the suit of the of that repertoire, of that type of music. Uh, and one's like, goody, goody, you're so fine. I want to have you all the time. And there's a verse in there. And I ask you about that. Uh, uh, the, and I send you that email and ask about the games you play. Well, you know, there was no email back no, then. No, no. <laughs> nothing. So you can tell, hey, this is new stuff. Right. You know, so <laughs> an old fart band <laughs> and have a new producer I don't have to get up there like the Grasswoods or a number of most 60s bands and only have to play what, what they had when they had it yeah. I've got all these uh, hits we had here 10 plus and, and then I got all this new stuff we released in in uh, Europe and my guys we can go two hours on our own material wow well I wanted to mention because another thing about talking to Ivan is he talked about a lot of manipulation by uh, the suits around him uh, in fact, he even sent us letters that he got from the uh, publicity team was managing him. There tell- was like, you will be here this time. You will do this. You will not talk to these people. I mean, it was egregious. You will, you will not use the word drugs in an interview. Yeah. You know, things like that. Now, Super yeah. K Productions, were they not a little manipulative? No, 
to the Ohio Express. I don't know Express. where he got his from, but you know, we were the kingpins, and they didn't. nobody gave us any static like that. Matter of fact, we were pretty crazy on the road. Did a tour across the Queens Highway with the, can- with the, with the Who. Uh-huh. Started in Montreal and ended up in Saskatoon. And, uh, of course, we did a lot of partying, and I think it was a couple of girls came up to our room from Hit Parade magazine. We didn't realize who they were. And kind of like it says, the article back in the hit parade, the Ohio Express, nice guys, not so nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you came into our room, you know. <laughs> hey, we're normal guys, you know. Uh, but uh, now I never had anything like that. Of course, we were pretty well, you know, uh, you know, brought up here in the in the valley where you know you get your butt whipped still in school and stuff. And so we were pretty courteous. Hey, I got guys. I got news for you, man. I mean, we get all these people on, you know, from all the old groups. And you know it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and they were all like, yeah, well, we went to church all the time. <laughs> no, that's not true. If you have an opportunity, you're going to take it. Hey, man, you know, it, uh, the road is hectic. The road is hell. A lot of people think, oh, man, look at all those girls. Well, you know, it wasn't like that. You're there one night, and you're not, you know, you're just enough to pack up, you get a couple hours of sleep somewhere, you fly out, and, you know, it, it's, it wasn't a pleasant life. It was very gritty. I got half crazy one time down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, we went across uh, down there with a tour with uh, Steppenwolf. Ended up in Baton Rouge, and uh, by the time I got from Texas to Baton Rouge, um, Justy Wilson would say it like that, yeah, Baton Rouge. Yeah, Baton Rouge. Yes. Uh, I was, I got, I was so tired and so fried. I just started walking down this street, and the guys had to come and get me. Go, where are you going? I said, I'm, I'm going home. I'm just, well, I'm going. You know? <laughs> and uh, so it, it, it's a gritty life, and it wasn't. Uh, it, it wasn't what people think it is. It was a lot of work. It was very hard, and it's a good thing. We were that young, our bodies wouldn't be able to take it, you know. Well, if, if you read Wikipedia, I don't know if you've ever looked at the Ohio Express. Yeah, on Wikipedia. I have some of that. Yeah. There, there's this whole backstory. Uh, uh, uh-huh. It's really hard to describe about how Joe Levine got to be made the lead singer, about how he did a demonstration uh, record or however it was or however you explain it, and, and they just released it with him, and, and then they said there was a different number of guys on the record compared to the guys on the road. Can you explain all this? Well, that's that's the, he was the writer. He was a jingle writer for Jeff and Jerry Cast and Super K. That's yeah. the management of uh, what Ivan probably is, is, is uh, complaining about, whatever. But yeah, I, and when he wrote it, we were in the studio at 3 o'clock in the morning, and that's why I said I did a take, did lead on, Dean did a take, Joey did a take. They liked the late Jilly's cheesy clothespin nose voice. And, uh, and so back, basically, it was an overlay over a couple... Uh, voices of, of all of us when we're in the studio, but Joey's predominantly, uh, that's his voice. And I'm going, man, you know, that's what we did, and we went with it. And, of course, playing out live don't make much difference. Uh, of course, back then, all the TV shows were Pat of mine, you know, Dick Clark to Merv Griffin to Dick Cavett to Dick, Don Webster's big, I did them all, I did them mm-hmm. all. That, you know, those were the days when you could Pat of mine. But, you know, we played out live, we just, you know, of course, we did, we can always sound like that when we sing, you right. know, so... Um, we just did it as close as we could, and uh, and that's how it was done. So it was well, not I a situation that just, a lot of you. Wikipedia almost gave an impression like not yeah. like a, a Milli Vanilli kind of thing, but almost like well, it had come off and said that what you hear on the album because it said that the album cuts was Joey and it said studio musicians, and so it said uh, that the album, you know, the album cuts were mainly us. Okay, uh, that first album, the Big Bone Steel album, has some really cool stuff on it because those were psychedelic days. I think there's one song on there, Dean, our bass player, wrote called Turn to Sand or something. It's one of them where he goes, goes along and it turns backwards and whoa, 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 and all that stuff's going on. Mm-hmm. That was, we had a ball. And uh, Jim Failer, who wrote really great songs, like She's Not Coming Home and that, great, great uh, uh, medley songs that were really pretty are on that first album. And on the second and third album, we, we did most of all our album cover and all our work there. Um, and then, of course, overlaid a lot of the vocals you know, what's one thing I ran into I didn't think about the other day, uh, Paul Schaefer has a two t- new sh- show on TV, and his first interview was with Joe Walsh. Well, man, Joe Walsh used to play, we were local bands, we were swimming Tim and the Royals, and he was up in Cleveland, and we'd be doing all the Catholic schools up there, and, there, and I, I mm-hmm. knew them guys as James Gang back then. Yeah, for sure. And we ended up in the studio there again, but this is how this works. And we helped Joe Walsh on some of his stuff do backline vocals, because... The Ohio Express came up with a band that was, you know, four or five guys, and five guys, and all of us could sing. Most bands had a guy up there trying to be Mick Jagger. Right. right. The Ohio Express, we could do Turtles, we could do all those coasters, we could do cool stuff because we really worked as hard on vocals as we did. The same thing with this band today. 
it kicks butt when it comes out when we do our full live show we have great harmonies four four harmonies yo. well like i and, said uh, thank god for that because i mean you're the drummer oh there's a few drummers that sang edward bear you know yeah. people like that oh, yeah. but you you sing now so you know i mean yeah. it's a good well, thing you worked on that well i got my one uh my one uh good friend of mine, Bruce Knott, has been in a number of bands with me. He's out in Arizona right now. He's the guy that said, Tim, get to get off the drums. <laughs> and I know there's something I just wanted to do. And that was back in the uh, late 70s. And, that, and from there on, I hired a good drummer. And I just, I'm in the front. I love being the guy up there. And I love taking a hold of the audience. And I love talking to them. And, I, and you know, I feel my music. You know, I, I, it comes out of me and I just let it come out. You know, I may look like Joe... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> like a crazy spastic looking guy. I do love it, man. I mean, it's 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 serious stuff to me, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great band, and I love being the leader of it in front. And uh, there was I paid my dues on the drums, and I still have a hot set of nice Sony's right here, right now in this garage I have for my shop. But and we actually have a practice here. We are really still a garage band. Hey, you know, I was going to say too because you, your <laughs> first hit. Beg, borrow, or steal to me, yeah. totally. You know that definitely is not bubblegum. Okay, that to me no, sounds. No, no, that is like that was, garage rock, right? I mean, it no, is, that was some damn good stuff. And, yeah, and they're they're getting that's uh, that's on uh, uh, Cleopatra. You'll get download and you'll hear it on there. It's all redone digitally, and uh, things are really a lot. Uh, uh, well, a lot fuller now because of digital. Back then, we were what we were hit starting on a four track system. Ended up then in Bell Studios in New York, and Capitol Studios, and they were those are twelve track tapes. Man, they're like two inches thick. You're yeah. Like, oh, this is it. Can't get any better than this. You know? <laughs> and my God, now it's it's a dinosaur. <laughs> the bigger the tape, the better the sound. You know. <laughs> well, you got more tracks. You <laughs> yeah. Know, you could you could separate more and then easier to mix. I wanted to ask you too. I've I've actually got the album of the Cats and Cats uh, Orchestral Circus, okay? Yeah. What was your involvement with that? That was a, a really weird situation. Wow. It was like the first time anybody heard the word supergroup. Now, you know, there was other yeah. ones that did it later, uh, you know, but, but that was that was something that was unique. Can you talk about that? Was that was a major production. Yeah. We actually, that whole thing, we practiced two weeks in Radio City for Carnegie Hall. I played Carnegie Hall. Hmm. Two weeks uh, with, the, with the, the Cats' groups, which are about five of us. So we had... Uh, we selected two of the best drummers out of the bands, and the rest of us were more like a choir in the back. And, of course, they had a uh, really neat guy that was a producer. I can't remember his name, but we rehearsed that, rehearsed that Carnegie Hall show. And if you got that album, that thing was played out live in Carnegie Hall. And I'm telling you, the one song we did, I think Jamie Lyons was the lead singer for the Music Explosion back then. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and um, <coughs> he did, uh, he had that voice. So we did... Uh, You've lost that loving feeling by the mm. Righteous Brothers, right? And uh, you know the choir part in the back, like my part was oh, 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 you know. And uh, you can imagine that with uh, you know with fifteen, twenty people, thirty of us up there, and, and extra drummers. It was a very fat show. And when he did that, you lost that loving feeling. I'm telling you what, man, I had tears in my eyes. That thing just went out there just like a million bucks. You know, there, God, this is powerful. You know, so those are some memorable moments you brought back to me. I forgot about the orchestral circus. Well, you know, I, I mentioned, I jokingly said that, that Super K Productions kind of sounded like k -Tel and not really, but they were good at promotion, as good as k -Tel was with their records. I mean, that was ingenious. They took all their groups and put them together in one group? Yeah. I mean, do you yeah, remember? Yeah, that was, you know, that was, you know what, yeah, that was really cool. And there again, it's the first thing you think, oh, this is, well, let's do this. These guys are nuts. And then, yeah. you know what, when it comes off, you're going, wow. This was really a cool idea. Uh, I've never seen it done since. Uh, you know, always seen you've seen things like that, but that was you know that was a lot of work because it was a rehearsal for two weeks straight. You know, because they had the you know, when people come into Carnegie Hall, they want to see something good, right? And no. you know, and they had the beginning. It was all psychedelic with lights going off and on, and they had these people in costumes running up and down the aisles. It was real, real spooky, like you know. It was like, like what's coming? You know, it, it was musical theater. That's what it was for sure. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. It was musical theater. Now, there's never been anything done on a scale that big. You get something like the traveling Wilburys to where you know, like Roy Orbison and, and Bob Dylan yeah. people, but nothing that big as, no, as was, that was. It was, a, it was cool. How did it go yeah, with uh, with not only rehearsing and performing, but also with selecting, you know, who was the best of the five groups? I mean. Was there any egos? Was there any butting of any heads? Anything like that? I mean, it's got to be know, hard. I, you know, I I can't remember any uh, any problems with it at all. Um, 
I, everybody just liked anything you could do, and, and it was just cool and and, uh, and overwhelming to be standing there on that cool stage in Carnegie Hall that looked like black glass. That I don't know what that was, some kind of a marble floor. It was huge, you know. And you look up in that place, and it looks like you're looking up a giant cone. It's so big. I'm thinking, my gosh. And so uh, for me, I was I didn't have any problem. I didn't have to play the drums. I didn't care. I just put me up there with the rest of them. Let's do this, you know. But. Um, uh, it was, uh, I can't remember my buddy, uh, you know, griping about it. Uh, it was kind of, uh, I think we were also young and dumb. We just kind of, went, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I've got to, I got to ask because you mentioned earlier about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Here you guys yeah. are on tour and I assume you're all in the same hotel. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got some crazy hotels. Oh, there, yeah, <laughs> you you got to tell me at least one because there had to be something went on. Oh my God. Let me think. God, we used to. Well, we, one time we were in Philadelphia, and we are bored, and we always had a great time of taking the toilet paper and putting it in the sink and making a huge spitball out of it. <laughs> we got, there was an alley between uh, the, I it was doing the Dick Cavett show, we were in Philadelphia. We're up about nine stories, I don't know what street, but between the two buildings was an alley with all those, uh, with the uh, fire escape things, and down below there, Dale, the guitar player, he was throwing out pennies, and he had all these kind of like, you know, homeless people or <laughs> winos or whatever, and he had them all up there underneath, the, right underneath our window, way, way down there, because they're, he was throwing out quarters and dimes, and they're down there picking it up, you know. Wow. And so he baited them to get underneath those fire escapes, and we made these gigantic, you know, sp spitball things. When they hit those uh, fire escape uh, uh, metal bars above their head this thing exploded <laughs> white pieces that stuff just stuck all over everything and the guys are down there they're going to kill us you know <laughs> then we had post we had posters extra somebody about 20 or 30 of them mm -hmm. and they're in the room and we folded them into giant uh, paper airplanes <laughs> and, and we threw them out the window up there and you could see them things man they were so huge wow. of course people were wee little either when you're up that high yeah and here's Things so would start coming down, drifting down the street, and boom, come right down, and you know, the people walk along the street like, what is this? Where'd this come from, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did rotten or things like that. <laughs> well, you could, have been, you could have been throwing bubble gum at them and, and chewed bubble yeah, gum. Yeah, well, there were times when we did have buckets of bubble gum. You, you know, did? Show. Okay, well. Our shows, and we'd throw out hands full, because why not? It's a great idea if you're going to be bubble gum. Throw them out some bubble gum. <laughs> we, we were trying to remember, because I had, I had said that the song Chewy Chewy would make the greatest TV commercial. I guess it wound up in a commercial, and we were trying oh, to remember. a number of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. perfect. Like, Wrigley should just jump on it or, or Double Bubble or something. You know, I've often thought that, like, Double Bubble, the bubble gum company, would be a great sponsor <laughs> for this band, you know. I don't know if we've ever had any approach on that by a couple of the agents or not. But, you know, that's, it's, yeah, it would be a good idea. Well, you know, everybody on your label seemed to get along quite well in a pretty close-knit group i know that super k would often recycle your songs like they would give you guys each other's songs how do you feel about that like when uh somebody else would do songs that you were oh, known for yeah you, know, you know the fruit gum coming you know you know like goody uh, goody goody gumdrops you know we yeah. recorded that i matter of fact uh, i just did a job with uh, frank and uh and uh mick uh, uh, they're the two originals, and of course they've got a younger back line. I just went down by myself when I, because I've been with them guys since you know from the beginning. And uh, it's like you know they're going to go, you're going to do goody goody gumdrops, you know, because mm -hmm. you know I re recorded that. That you'll hear that on the uh, the, the compilation from uh, Cleopatra Records. And uh, of course we do it. We did it with I mean a major driving bass, boom 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 in the bottom, and then we get into a really far out. I have a, I have a guitar second that nobody. I call him guitar Johnny Guitar Baker. And uh, he just smears a really cool lead in this thing and that. But, you know, we have uh, really made it kick butt and strong. Right. And, uh, and even, the, even the Fruit Gum guys go, Tim, you're going to do this song. I go, yeah, because I do it. I do it better. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 heard you, uh, I heard you do uh, Simon Says, too. You know, Simple Simon Says, you know, Fruit Gum yeah. Company. So, and you yeah. did quite well. I've done so many. I guess a lot of those I've dropped. Right. Are you guys still there? Yeah, we're still here. Now, I wanted to ask oh. you, though. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I just I, I went dead here. No sound. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. Cool. Okay, uh, I'm back. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you, though, because I, I know that, you know, Joey Levine was kind of like the writer, you know, primarily for uh, Ohio Express. And then yes. a little bit later, you know, I guess Joey, at least from what I've read and researched, Joey got a little bit upset or disgruntled or whatever that he wasn't, you know, getting 
feeling he was being treated fair or making enough money, and so he left yeah. the group. Now, how did that end up affecting you guys? I mean, he wasn't really on the road with you guys, right? No, not at all. I, you know, he got upset because Super K was just ripping him off, you know, and that's what they did to all their bands, royalty-wise, and mm-hmm. they, if that was his, his beef. You know, with us, we were all good friends and had fun with him in the studio, and I admire him to this day. Right. Well, you know, you got to perform with one of my favorite groups, the Music Explosion. A little bit of soul yeah, is one yeah, of my yeah. favorite songs in the world, and yeah. uh, I'm quite impressed, man. You just you knew anybody that was everybody. Well, you know, the one of the uh, two of the guys are just a couple miles away from me to this as we speak. Uh, uh, Rick Nesta uh, has a, uh, a restaurant, a high a high fight, high line restaurant here in Mansfield, Ohio, and mm-hmm. Burton Stall. Uh, is in Mansfield, which is, you know, just, uh, I'm in the Valley of Lexington, you go up the long valley out of town here, and you come to Mansfield, where the Shellshank Redemption fame is, and etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, those two guys are there. Uh, in the end, uh, the booking of the explosion, when we were still on the road, was not going well, and they put, uh, they got, they sent everybody home but Jamie Lyons, the, the singer, mm-hmm. and they put Jamie Lyons with us for, uh, for uh, the, one of the last years I was on the road. Fantastic. And we would do the explosion music and, and bring him up. Well, we're and, definitely uh, hoping to have some of the explosion on, because I've always wanted to talk to them. But, yeah, uh, yeah, there's two up here in Mansfield, Ohio. Very, very uh, cool. Yeah, you mentioned the, the Shawshank thing, and th- that kind of perked my ears up. It brings me back around to a project I wanted to ask you about, which doesn't really have anything to do with music. But you did something with restoring a car, working on a car that had yeah. something to do with that. I right? have here uh, a friend of mine. Is the, he's the uh, head honcho out there. He's got a little, oh, a nice little wine bar here in Lexington, and and he is the pretty well procures all the activities. And this thing is a big operation. They do have a big GM summer blast off with the heavy metal bands or the heavier bands than us. But he uh, contracted me. I'm doing the U.S. Marshal car. At the very end of the movie, where they pull in to arrest the warden and he shoots himself, that yeah, gray Ford is a U.S. Marshal car, and that I have right here in my shop as we speak. I had to go clear down to Kentucky to get another frame for it because after the movie, it's sitting in the field for 20 years and it <laughs> rotted. Oh. Wow. And so I'm making it out of pieces. And then after we do this one, we're going to do the black and white. I think it's a Dodge, and it's more. It, it kept, he kept it in the building out there by the reformatory. And uh, but I was out there the uh, last year was an extra for these. Uh, a couple of these guys uh, here in uh, Crestline, Ohio, their, their effects uh, division of movies for stuff out in L.A., they, they do side movies, and one of them is called uh, Blood uh, 13 or whatever, and they use this, the, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the old um, reformatory because it's, it's a really cool-looking place. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I was an extra, so I'm in there in my orange suit <laughs> in, a, in a jail rumble out in the, in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> they should have had you out there. My wife goes. Well, you, my wife goes. Well, you look like a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have been sitting there going chewy, chewy, chewy. <laughs> yeah, but you'll see me in the back going chewy, chewy. <laughs> well, I know I'm not the only fan of the Ohio Express because we mentioned in the beginning uh, American Pickers. Now that's one of my favorite TV shows, and and yeah. I know that Mike and Frank came out. How did that come about? I guess it came it, about through another member of your group that went to their store? Well, my sound man. My sound man, he and his brother build homes here. They build these fancy places around these little lakes here. The villages they call them. Applewood Village is one of them. And so in between, I had him out at my place putting on new soffits and spouting. You know? mm-hmm. And he come in the shop here and he give me an update and some, you know, where I'm at and gave him more money. And he goes, you know what, man? He goes, you got all this stuff out here and you're in, this, you're in the band. I goes, you'd be perfect for the pickers. I go, Dave. I said, get out of here. I'm a peanut man. They would never come here. Get back out there and finish my house. <laughs> well, a week later, he comes in again. He goes, hey, I submitted you. I go, well, that ain't gone nowhere. <laughs> so then about another week, the uh, guy, Tommy, from uh, in New York from the uh, editing division goes, Tim, I want to come down and interview you. Talk about maybe, you know, what's it for the show. I go, okay, you know, so here he comes, and I thought, well, he's a nice kid. We had a good time talk, laugh, showed him around the place, and I thought, well, that's the end of this. Yeah. And then about another week later, I get a call from Nashville. Tim, this is Cody. I'm a producer, of the, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, the, the guy's going to be in Finley, Ohio on the 22nd. We can beat your house on Thursday at 9 in the morning. Can you be there? And I go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go, my God. But I'm such a rotten, crappy guy, you know. It was in, the, it was in the October, and it was just gray and cold and damp. And I go, 
my God. They were there from 9 to 6 o'clock. Wow. But I'll tell you what, I, it just sinks in after they leave. Like, you know what? They were here. They were in my house. You that, know? That's and right. And Frank and I, we had a ball. He's one of He's one of He's an old rock head. He's like a history book with rock and roll. And he goes, dude, he goes, I saw you on the Dick Clark show when I was a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there was only one guffaw because, you know, a lot of people wanted to find out about reality shows if they're yeah. directed or it's just or it's they just, just let the camera random. go. I guess Frank kept calling you another name. Like yeah, he, no, he kept calling me Jim. And I, finally, <laughs> I think they left it on the show. I go, Frank, it's Tim. Because he's so, he so excited, you know, about, you know, he had me signing autographs and stuff. I go, I fixed them up with the CDs. that you. Uh, well, I'm going to have Candy send you the new stuff. Right. I think she downloaded you all that old original. Yeah. But anyway... I signed the CDs for him and that, and we got to be talking about what we used to do when, you know, when I was on the road, and he used to be a pipe fitter and worked for the fire department, and, you know, he's just one of, he's just a fun guy to be with. I was, you know, uh, that helped because I thought, well, these guys just probably look at this stuff and want to get out of here, and, uh, but hell, I sold him an old BSA motorcycle and radio control airplane. I'm avidly into scale aircraft. I've been flying for a long time. But anyway, and Mike, Mike's more of a producer telling, telling Frank what to say. <laughs> you know, I kind of, I kind of had that feeling. That it, it's get really that out of them. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really Mike's but show. No, Mike's a great guy. They're all nice guys. But boy, there was a heck of a crew comes with them guys. I mean, really? it's a four or five box trucks, a big uh, Ford camper that's their office unit. Uh, uh, of course, their vans, uh, the sound people, the lights. And, I mean, it's a, it's a major production. I've got to find out uh, w- when they do what they do. Now, you said that they, they bought something from you. Uh, do they pay for their own stuff they buy, or does uh, the History yeah. Channel pay for it? No, when they when they leave, like I said, that office uh, truck, or uh, I'm sorry, camper, it's a nice Ford motorhome, a uh, major big one, and uh, they have, you know, of course, the guys live in it and travel in it and meet mm-hmm. up with everybody on the crew. And they have the checkbook in that in that vehicle. Mm. And before they everybody left, they wrote me a check. Wow. wow. Well, I hope. I mean, I had, and, the, and it's funny that the Canada the checks are a bank in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Must well, be a tax loop. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm glad to find out they're real because I'll tell you, I went out to Vegas. Yeah, they're real. I went out yeah, to yeah. Vegas and visited the Pawn Stars. They're not even in the damn store. Okay, you can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. you can't. <laughs> Uh, They're not but there. you know, it's funny. It, it, it's just that whoever you know, I've been doing that kind of stuff like the, like the pickers myself, and I knew everything. I, I kind of, and I'm not an avid watcher of anything, any of these shows like that. But I watch it. I think, yeah, 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 I know what that is. And I've been there, you know. And you, you kind of get jealous of them. I think, well, them guys got a little shop the same big as mine. I got more junk, and I was probably doing this when they were, you know, still trying to walk. You know what I'm going? Mm-hmm. But then you think about it. It's just how you, where you are. Some guy in L.A. or what? We were, we're going to produce a show. Go out there and go to Iowa and find a guys what we're looking for right. and you know it's just you got to be lucky in this business the Ohio Express was was lucky in a way I know there was talent there but uh, you know a lot of times it was really hard to get on stage and a lot of these little towns outside New York and you know, like in upstate and that and and the local band get on there and blow you away really yeah. uh, because the New York musicians and that just and their vocals there's just something there's a breed out there and there was just tight damn good musicians of course you had the hit so you were God but I'm, you know, really, because people don't really know how to judge a good musician, and most people, they're, they're sheep, that's why they're out there. Uh, you know, I'm going, God, we got to get up, these guys are so good. <laughs> well, I mean, you like know. Most of the time, I wasn't the greatest drummer in the world, and I go, man, that kid's a good drummer. I go, my God, they're going to, you know, it was, it was hard sometimes. Well, you obviously hit big, at least, you know, not only with all of us fans, uh, all the fans, yeah. including me, but, you know, in the beginning of the uh, intro of the Picker Show, just to go back to that for a second, they were talking yeah. about all the famous people they met, like Errol Smith and, and, and yeah. Cheap Trick, you know, uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, who, by yeah. the way, delivered my drum set because I lived in his town in his dad's music store. I bought a drum oh, set. Really? And he, cool. he delivered the drum out to my house. But uh, they're talking about you with some of the greats, and there you go. So you Well, know. And, yeah. and Frank was more nervous to meet you, from what they said, than anybody. Yeah, he was... Uh, you know, uh, Mike goes at the end of the show, we're talking, he's like, you're, you're drooling over this guy. I, go, I, never, <laughs> I never wanted him, you know, I thought, I'm kind of here to impress anyone. I'm, and then I, so I thought, well, hell, now all my neighbors know what I got in my buildings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of them, you know, we're out there, I'm out there in the country, you know, outside of this little town of Lexington, where you can walk out on your deck naked and rip off 30 rounds of groundhogs, and I leave the keys in the car. Right. And, uh. And one neighbor come down, they run the road, and he goes, Tim, what's going on? Are you getting busted? 
<laughs> well, I, I knew it would go well. I, I knew they wouldn't. I knew they wouldn't cheat you because you've dealt with agents and publicists, and, and you know how. <laughs> you know how yeah, to how to get. Yeah, I said no. We're they're they're part there. It's a TV thing, man. It's yeah. Moving. <laughs> now the, the the current incarnation uh, of your group, okay, Ohio Express. Are you the only original member of the group now, or? Yeah, I am. I uh, you know I offered the uh, couple of the gentlemen that are left over. We have lost two of the original members. Right. Uh, Jim Fehler, original keyboard player, passed away. Uh, it's been about she's about fifteen now years wow. uh, in, in uh, Sanibel. And Doug uh, Grassel, he was rhythm lead, and uh, I was doing a lot of work with him uh, with our agent in Cologne, Germany, Candy Music, doing East German tours. And he passed away in Germany. He was, got into alcohol. And I told Gerd, the producer, I said, you got to get a handle on this guy or he's going to lose him. And, you know, it's hard. I mean, alcohol is, uh, if you've been, if it's come to your family, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Right. And uh, it, it finally got him. You know, he just, you know, yeah, you know, know what it does. He just drank too much and blew out. And so out of that, there's the other two left here in, around me in Mansfield, Ohio, again. And, uh, and they, they really then, uh, they always made fun of me doing it and stuff like that, even though when I trademarked, I, I offered them to be a part of the corporation. Now that they see the things that, you know, and, the, and it's your call to duty. You wouldn't believe how this has affected people and how they love this, yeah. especially this, these German tour stuff I've been doing. I got into concert halls out there that they look like they just looked so stiff, and, and I thought, well, we'll just get this over with. And when you start playing, you could see their lips. They know the words. They love you, and you know you affected their lives, and and it makes you feel so good. So you just get it. You do it from your heart for these people, and I do it to this day that way. So I always believed in it, and now it has come to fruition, and it's proof in the pudding. And uh, so these guys kind of see that now, and it, you know there's some there's offers to me if we, to bring back a couple originals for a couple shows, and and I, I told them I would do that with them. Uh, but, but, you know, so they're, they're, at this point when we're cranky like me and mean, I'm a stinker button when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, my way or the highway, because I paid my dues and kept this name alive and active right. and trademarked so nobody else can do it. And I get these guys, well, you know, why don't you go back on the back end? Don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. You, right. know? you know, I like what you did. Here you're the drummer, and now you're the head guy, and you took over. If Ringle Star would have asserted himself <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody had to do it, right? Yeah, somebody <laughs> had to do it. You're damn right. I mean, Ringo would have sit up and said, hey, and maybe you could have got a little further in life. I don't know. <laughs> so of all your songs from the Ohio Express, uh, and then also tell me the new ones you're doing, what are your very favorites of the old songs and the new songs? Well, you know, I'll tell you Mercy, uh, the way we do it new. And when you get that, we're going to make sure, I'm going to make sure you get all the new stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's really, you know, they're all. that's a great song. And then I'll tell you Yummy Yummy. And when you get you pull you pull that down and you get that I mean that bass the drum and the bass got to be it's boom you know and uh, it kicks butt um, and then the new stuff is really cool and then you don't have any of that there I don't think Candy sent you so I'll, I'll get that out to you okay. uh, but I you know um, I like them all I really do and uh, but yeah yummy and probably and then Big Bar and Steel has a heck of a nice you know it, it, it kicks it's a good old rock and roller. Now, from what I understand, you actually got into kind of like using your songs for uh, commercials and promotion that you uh, recently yeah. performed Yummy, Yummy, Yummy on a German TV show promoting Italian yeah. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was the, uh, the Ultimate Chart Show, and it was in Cologne, and I was there with Elvis Presley's original band members. That was a cool thing. Oh, to cool, Democrats. yeah. But, yeah, that's uh, But, you know, another one I'll tell you that I really like doing was the... Uh, the B side of Chewy, I'm pretty sure it was the B side, was Firebird. Yeah. And of course, it's 1968 in Pontiac, Get Away in a Wide Track in Pontiac. That was their theme song. Hired us to come up to uh, Dearborn, Michigan, to the factory, and do a shoot around all the new cars. Oh, and cool. of course, Jeff and Jerry told them the, the A side of the record is going to be Firebird. Yeah. And uh, and it didn't. They, they took them for a, a bunch of money, and it wasn't to the A side. But anyway. <laughs> I, I I play that out to this day, especially if we get into like a car show or a, like a big you know outdoor thing. People love that, and I redid that. It, I'll get that'll come out to you on the, on the new way we do it, and um, it's got great harmonies and it's a nice stack. And Firebird is a heck of a song, and that's one of my favorites. I'll have to say. I, I think you know I, I agree with you. You made a comment on Pickers, and, and it, really you you have a right to say this. It's true that you guys really were the kings of the bubble gum. Yes, we are. I got yeah. you know. You know, it's funny, you're, you're telling me, I haven't watched that show yet. I mean, they sent me... Really? CDs. 
And uh, I, I'm horrible about that. I don't think I've even watched a Dick Clark show yet. I, I just don't <laughs> watch the movie that I make. I'm weird. I just don't. I don't. I don't want to look at myself. But anyway, I hear all about it. It even had a party for me, a viewing party here at this local uh, wine bar. My buddy that does the shell shank uh, thing out mm-hmm. there. And I think I got, I kind of remember telling Frank that it's Tim, not Jim, but I got so loaded from people buying me drinks, <laughs> I don't remember watching it. <laughs> but I do have the CDs from the editing division, they sent me uh, DVDs, I mean, I'll, and I will watch it, but I believe everything you tell me. <laughs> yeah, and I think you should call the History Channel and say, hey, look, I've got an idea for my own reality show. Well, I was yeah. thinking, because you were mentioning all the other uh, people, all of your other buddies from, you know, the kind of the bubblegum group thing that have uh, yeah. businesses in your area. Uh, yeah. I yeah. think that could be a great reality show. You know, that's a great idea. There well, you, you guys are out there. With, get, me, get me hooked up. I'm in the valley where we're, we're out here with groundhogs and, and guns. you got to <laughs> get me back into L.A. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I, now and then the now and then the Amish will go by with their horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's but it's lovely. It is it is the heartland. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, as much as I'm in love with Susie Cowsill of the Cowsills, she told me <laughs> if I could get her on a certain talk show that I could be on a show with her, but I couldn't do it because <laughs> it, it wouldn't work out. They wouldn't listen to me, so I didn't get to meet Susie Cowsill. So. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, you know, you're right. Though, you know, we have more hits in this business than anybody is, is labeling that kind of music. Well, we you know, are the kings. Well, for instance, Yummy, Yummy, Yummy was actually heard on Monty Python's Flying Circus, on yeah. The Simpsons, oh, yeah. Six Feet Under. I, I mean, you know, uh, Fear, Fear and Loathing. I just got some residual from that, from, uh, from and it's my voice on that one, Yummy, that's in um, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, about four bars of it. Okay. Mm. And yeah. I got this, I go, look at this check. I go, man, I go, what's that? It says Cloudy W slash Meatball. It didn't hit me for a while. <laughs> I go, what, it's a movie. That's a movie residual. I go, wow, is that cool? Yeah. I like it. I went through the Red Lobster, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, I mean, now that you trademarked and, and you know, you own yeah. uh, Ohio Express, do you, do you get the residuals from anything like back yeah, in the well, 60s? that's or? why I re-recorded everything over into my voice, all of it. Right. Is, you know, I, I'm not bragging. That's just the way it should have been from the beginning. And, of course, digital, it makes everything so nice and smooth. And then I got, uh, you know, I did it all through Sony Music Group, which is, uh, with you out there, would be uh, Cleopatra Records. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I'm with San Juan Records in New York. That's the Christmas CD. That's Sony. Uh, I was doing stuff out of Vegas for the Sony Music Group. I re-recorded Love Potion Number 9, you know, some stuff. I think it's for, like, when you go into these discount stores and you hear that ceiling music. Yeah. <laughs> and if you ever hear Love Potion Number 9 and the, the one line goes, I've been that way since 1956. I went, I said, I've been that way since 1966. There you know, go. You'll know it's me. And I thought, well, they're going to shit can this because, uh, you know, I, I made the, I just changed the words. And they go, hey, Timmy, we love it. Just leave it like that. I like 66. I go, and, and well, you, you know, we need to keep moving up with this song. Right? And you know you did that. So people like me would go, hey, that's him. You know? Because well, see, that's it. When you hear, I've been that way since 1966, I go, that's, that's the same people I did the, uh, uh, Oh, Scooby Doo for. Uh-huh. Right. They call me up with some stuff now and then, and and uh, and send me the tracks, and uh, it's fun. Now the Scooby you know, Doo, the like, Scooby Doo song. I know it was released as an album. You said something yeah. about for the cartoon show. Was was it ever on the cartoon itself, the the TV show, or? I'm not sure where they put it at or what you know part of the show. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing: that song was not easy to do. Uh, there's one line on there. Um, there again, I thank God for my one keyboard player because he's my coach. Go, he'll look at me with and, look, and get ready. Puts his hand in the air, boom, points his finger up. We go, ah, and I'm on, you know. And uh, because there's one line in that Scooby thing, I thought this would be a piece of cake. We were mm-hmm. in the studio, in Smith, Ohio, going to get Maker Studio. Really good people. That's where these CDs will come. That's new. I, I'll send you. And uh, but it was tough. And I, when I when I finally got it, I go, wow. I so went all the way down there. I knew I was going to stumble on this one verse. So I had my I had ear uh, headphones on, on with the CD portable CD player all the way down to the studio because it's two hours away. Going over and over and over and over. And by golly, that helps. I hit it. Wow. But it's most embarrassing to get in the studio and then have to do it over. But that's what's nice about digital recording now. Because if you get halfway through a song, you go, hey, we can cut the rest, we can do it with this lap, we'll over it. I go, that's cool. used to be, 
in the old tape days. And if you screwed up, you had to go clear through it. And then you had your part right. Yeah. Somebody else screwed up. Everybody else had to do it over with you. Right. And then they all got pissed off at each other. Look at them going, man, don't screw up again. <laughs> Especially being a drummer back then. Well, people should so definitely I, uh, look at the differences between nowadays and the old days. Like, you know, I kept thinking to myself with all this this stuff that's going on with, with the Weinstein trial, the the director that was coming on to all the women, if he would have just listened to your song, One, Two, Three, Red Light, he <laughs> yeah, would have exactly. he would yeah, gotten into trouble. Time. I try to hit on you. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, a good idea. They should play that before the trial. <laughs> so give everybody uh, you know uh, information as far as if they want to come to your shop. Now, you've got an actual shop. Go ahead and tell people where it is and what you do and, and how they can come in and say hi. Yeah, we're at. Uh, it's called the Bucket Seat, and actually, you know, I got anything in here from uh, from uh, Airstream tra- uh, trailers to buff out and restore to a local, you know, crash on. Or, uh, I do all the insurance company stuff. Uh, it's in Lexington, Ohio. Uh, and if you just want to find Lexington, look up the Mid Ohio Sports Car Track, and that's the big thing. And I'm right here in that town, and it's the only body shop in town. And uh, of course, it's got all kinds of cars sitting out around in front, which drives me nuts. I'm trying to clean up my act. I get rid of one and two more come. Mm-hmm. So out front's a line of MGs and Triumphs and then the shell shank cars out there right now because uh-huh. i got two paint booths and i got to keep moving stuff around. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it, I don't know. To me, it's just a... Uh, here again, I've been doing this body work thing, this shop, this repair shop for 40 years, and I've got boys now, uh, 21 and 26, and I started over with them when I was 44. Wow. And had my last one when I was 50. And... Um, and I, this is, I'm going to let them come in here and take over, and I just want to uh, basically get out, and I'd like to be in, down in Florida with Mickey, my agent. I could be out there with you guys. <laughs> yeah. With, uh, with Bo and them guys, i got places to stay, and I just, I really want to do that, but the shop's cool. If anybody's in Ohio, in the middle of Ohio, and they're in Mansfield, if they're coming here, a lot of people come to that show shank thing just to see it now. they got a tour and everything. It's pretty cool. Well, I know you're, you're a local hero. Of course, you was written up in all the Ohio papers and stuff. We saw articles on your pickers thing and that. But has anybody uh, else come into the store that would kind of like Frank? And like, oh, my God, you're from the Ohio yeah. Express. Uh, that, that spurred up uh, interviews from different people calling me from different newspapers. And one of them, the big TV station, uh, Leon Bibbs, is a gentleman up there that's been doing interviews with, he just goes out and finds people and interviews them. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually, there's one guy, he's like, uh, he's, he's a legend in Ohio, and, uh, and called me and came down and because of that show. And uh, I did an interview with him, uh, took him out to the house, showed him around. He, they wanted to see it all. And I thought, man, you know, it, it doesn't sink in until somebody like that comes out there like them. And, th- and you know, you're thinking, well, Tim, you know, I just I get up every morning and put my socks and shoes on like anybody else. Yeah. And, yep, those guys will come out here and you go, you must have an effect on people. And, you know, and you know, you think, well, you know, what a lucky guy I am to have somebody appreciate you like that. And, well, I'm, so I'm very think, glad you're not egotistical, and, and you're not. You're very down to earth. We we got to kick well, we got to kick out of your website. My daughter got to kick out of your website. No, uh, your Facebook. Oh, uh, your Facebook yeah. page. Cause t- well, tell them what you read about the party. Well, you were uh, in November. You were promoting and saying that you were, you know, holiday time is the perfect time to hire Ohio Express for your local holiday party. And I yeah, was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of cool because you really, yeah. again, are kind of like, you know, going back to your roots and being kind of like a garage band almost. There's nothing like playing locally and, and, and having fun with all the people that yeah. you know, you're close to in the area. I love it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I even played here, though. There's a bar here called uh, Bucks. It's uh, it's pretty well themed from the racetrack out here, the Mid Ohio racetrack. They got all the famous race drivers and pictures and stuff. And they had a big uh, patio. And they go, would you play here? And I go, hell yeah, I'll bring the band down here. I'm telling you. <laughs> It, 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 the cops had to shut us down. <laughs> but then I know all the Lexington local police, but uh, they go, you know, it's 11 o'clock, Tim, because we have a major sound. Right. And uh, oh, people, are, oh, they were past the gate. They are clear out by the street there, which was, I guess, illegal by insurance standards. And so they go, well, you got, it's after 11. It's so loud. You guys got to wrap it up. But, hell, they wouldn't let us go. Wow. And, uh, but I love doing that because I go, this, I love showing... People that you know, we don't. There's no place to really play around here except maybe Cleveland, some place in Columbus, Cincinnati's got venues. But there, you know, in this in this area, it's just to whoever has the party, I'll play it. 
Last summer we have a doctor here, a surgeon, Kingpin, that uh, he is having a private party way out in the country. We took everything down to his house. They built us a special place to set up because wow. he had the buddy. And, uh, and we played the two years in a row. We played his summer party for him. Nice. <laughs> well, we we really do hope you come out here because it'd be just it's I, cool. You know, I will. Find, when I get out there, I've got a call to call Tammy back. Now her husband is Randy Hill. He's playing lead guitar off on out there with uh, Sean Anna. Yeah. And I stay with them in Pasadena, so I'll get out there and, you know, I played out there, one place you may know of was the um, oh, the Lakewood Hop or whatever, where we had a tribute to Huggy Boy, mm. who was a DJ that's been big time way back, yeah. that passed away, yeah. you know, and yeah. I was out there with Redbone. <laughs> wow, no, that's that, yeah, I didn't know you know Redbone. Because we know Pat Vegas very Pat, well. Pat Vegas did a radio show for us for a yes. while, yes. Wow. Well, I, I I was so impressed because I was such a fan of theirs back in 73. I remember buying the album, and I go, these guys are Indians, and look how cool they play rock and roll. I yeah. told my dad. I used to, my dad was always the one that did stuff like Zap comic books in New York. Going, dad, you got to see these comic books. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like it in Ohio. But I told him, I said, these guys, I met him, and Bobby, their road guy, he goes, hey, man, he goes, we're East L.A. It was like being with Cheech and Tong. So he goes, man, next time you come to the airport, man, he said, let me pick you up. I'll take you really to the cool places and the chicks, because when I get picked up by Randy and his wife, they, mm. they hide me away in their pool house up there, and they won't let me have any fun. So I go, yeah. I go, Bobby, I got your number. Next time I fly into LX, I'm having you pick me up. He goes, yeah, man. I go, these guys are so cool. And uh, I will do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever talk to uh, the remaining members of Redbone, which are not a lot left anymore, one is Pat yeah. Vegas. Let him know I still have his jacket. It's still at my studio. <laughs> so. when I, what was cool about them, guys, they had really cool jackets, but their vests were those bone vests. Oh, yeah. Right, right. One, it would look good on them. I go, you guys are cool, man. We had a good time. They're good people. And they were somebody else that admitted to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I appreciate somebody <laughs> that does. I'm not going to believe you guys acting like Pat Boone. Okay? No. There's no uh-uh. They were good boys. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, well, I'll tell you, going across the Queens Highway with the Who, uh, oh. the, the tour. Man, I, we were, <laughs> we, we were, you know, they, those guys drink. Uh, we were in this really <laughs> fancy Queen Elizabeth Hotel in Montreal. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, they all they got so boozed up. And, and that's a real fancy place. It was embarrassing because they're, they're playing their glasses, you know, with the guy that comes to your high school and puts water in and makes them, ooh, <laughs> you know, the And finally we got out of there because they got crazy. And it was later that night we get a knock on the door and their little road, roadie guy, I forget his name, but he had those lamb chops, white uh, chops and then a bald head on top. And uh-huh. he knocks and opens the door and he goes, you go out in the grass. He goes, all they do is drink. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Come on in. <laughs> you need to come out with a book. Seriously, you got yeah. so many stories. Like, you know, I want to hear oh, about uh, the I old days of TV because we were so in awe of you for having done Bandstand. Uh, Dick Clark was such a great guy. I mean, you know. It, yeah, and we were late getting there. Uh, we could go round and round in LX. We flew first class in the 727s, which is like having a living room chair. While we're going round and round, we drank all four bottles of their champagne, <laughs> did a little partying in the bathroom. And then uh, we were so late, uh, and Dick was saying, you know, here they are now, if you see the show, we thought they weren't going to make it. Uh, this is my daughter's favorite band, their f- two songs, and, and uh, Jeff and Jerry were there because they wanted to meet Dick Clark from yeah. Super K Production, the management. And, oh, God, where are you guys be? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you know, we couldn't help it. Man. The plane just had to go round and round. He said, look at you. You're all screwed up. I go, well, we drank all the champagne. You know what? What? <laughs> Well, was there anybody that you were on the road with, like anybody you played with back in the day uh, that you didn't get along with? Uh, that we did or did not get along with? Did not. Did not get along uh, with. Guys, I remember one time. What's, who's the guys that did the smoking in the boys' room? Uh, Brownsville Station. Uh, it was, well, yeah, it was, I think it was them. They had these chicks with them. Man, they were kind of like low lives. I thought, this club we played. And... Uh, and they had these, you know, they looked like some pretty rough girls. Yeah. And, of course, we were in our dressing room, and they, they had a really nice uh, setup for sandwiches and, and all that stuff. And um, we get back in the dressing room, and all the stuff's gone. And that's what they, they go to these gigs, man. They pack up all the food and put it in the guitar cases. They stole everything. <laughs> I go, you, you dogs. <laughs> you know, I go, they could, sleaze bags. I couldn't believe they did that. You know, wow. See, I did a lot of work and still have a good friend of mine is uh, um, Freddie Cannon. He's out there in Ventura. Oh, he's Boom Boom, boom Freddie Freddy Canyon guy. guy. Wow. And, and uh, uh, yeah, speaking of that, we were doing the uh, awards out there for the um, oh, uh, studio. Uh, 
the, the awards for newscasters. They give them a, the same kind of like an Emmy thing, but it's yeah. just for newscasters. Right, right. right. And, uh, and we, we had Freddie Cannon did his thing on I Was the Express, and I did my back line with the guys out there with you. And um, and we're speaking of food, man, he goes, he's great straight in Jersey. And we went to a little restaurant where in between the, where we're going to do the thing. And, uh, the, well, we had the bartender out there in the, the tuxedo. Uh, and one of the awards presenter was, uh, what's his name, that did the Goonies, uh, the Fratelli Brothers. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, he, he was elite. he's always singing in and, and the, and the Goonies, ooh, you know, the, and he really does sing. And I had to sit at the bar with him having scotch, and it was in James Bond. I go, you know, I, of course, I never ask anybody for an autograph or nothing, but I go, man, I really admired you, and I think my favorite movie is The Goonies mm-hmm. anyway. It was such a neat, to meet the people that you meet when you get out there. Uh, but anyway, we're in the restaurant, and, uh, and uh, Freddie goes, no, tell me, remember, if you get the fish, don't eat it if it smells like fish. <laughs> it's Jersey. I go, all right. It's like being with Joe Patch. <laughs> And so is out there. Another guy is just like them. Is 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 Joey D. You know Joey D. and the Starlighters. Right. Who I did that Christmas CD with. It's fun. It's like being with Joe Petchy. Them guys are wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm so glad that you had a great life. And you're still doing it, and you're there for rock and roll, and you're there for. Uh, uh, gearheads everywhere, yeah, and, and yeah. we're gonna definitely oh, yeah. be uh, looking up your friends' music explosion. Tell them I'm coming, and and tell them I'm a good I guy. Will tell, I'll, I'll get you hooked up, and uh, and uh, get the other new stuff that I uh, redigitalized, and then listen to Firebird. You know, I like it. Perfect. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody because I talked to the Electric Prunes, and let me tell you, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like I'll bet that was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Tim. You know, it's funny. Howard Stern, that's another guy I'd like to get. I'm going to send him this. There's a way to just comment to somebody. Uh-huh. He's mentioned our band a couple times. Right. It was about a week, a week and a half ago. He goes, this thing in the Middle East, he says, that music they play is like, so it's a thousand years old. He goes, why do they do something like, yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. There you go. You know, I go, all right, Howard, I love you, man. <laughs> I always thought the, the title, yummy, 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 it just, to me, it was something sexual. I don't know why. Maybe my, my mind well, was you know, in the if you, if you look at that article, that, that's another thing. Uh, with uh, oh, uh, uh, just did the yummy yummy. Who had the most yummies? It was on Amazon front page. Uh, yeah, they're comparing. Uh, well, there was an article in Variety that was comparing y- your song "Yummy Yummy" with uh, the Justin Bieber "Yummy." Justin Bieber. Okay, yeah. if you look at that, listen to that article. They do mention that. You go yummy yummy yummy. Let's look at these verses. Love is such a sweet thing, good enough to eat thing. And they're going, you go, you dirty bastard. Yeah. <laughs> they, wrote, they wrote that right there. I go, well, they used to write that kind of stuff up in the in hit parade. And I go, listen to the words, really, what these guys are saying in this song. <laughs> you, you know, you're... So it was, you know, it had a little bit in there for everybody. You, you're, right. Well, not for me, because I'll tell you why. Because there was this girl that I had a crush on. And she wrote me this this love letter, and I'm thinking it's going to be something original, right? And I'm reading it, and it goes, yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love in my... And it says the lyrics all the way down. I'm like, you're copying these guys' song, right? Something original, you know? I know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. how can people get a hold of you? I mean, you're on Facebook. Uh, you got a website, or...? Well, here's, go to the Facebook is a tool now. I had a separate website. It's linked right on the first couple of uh, uh, sections on that Facebook. Just put, t- tap here to go to the website. You're going to love it. It's live. The covers are there. Check it out. Uh, but the website's on the Facebook. Perfect. And it's just right there immediately within a few segments of it. When you get open it up, you just go, hey, come here and see our website. It's very it's a really neat uh well done. Finally, I think I think I finally got a good website. And, and yeah, we've got Christmas over with, and we got definitely parties coming up. And I, people can hire a piece of rock and roll history by getting uh, the Ohio Express. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm ready. We're ready and willing. And uh, and they're on that website on the Facebook. There you go, uh, right. Tim. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to get the connections and numbers. It's all right there, and and it's really cool. To, the website's on Facebook now, and it's, I think everything's Facebook. I'm selling cars through Facebook. It's the tool to sell the it band is. with. It Incredible. Is. And maybe you could sell the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame into putting the monkeys in. because that <laughs> <would be good. laughs> Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Terry Stewart, I know him personally. Okay, very good. Very All good. right, well, Tim, I want to thank you so much for chatting with us. We've had such a blast, and make sure, uh, let's keep in touch. I will, and I'll have Candy send you out the, the new stuff. And I'll get you set up with uh, the Music Explosion guys. Perfect. Definitely. We'll definitely play your stuff. We're, in fact, we're going to play your Scooby-Doo track come up in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's cool. <laughs> Do it. All okay. Right. Have a great rest Thank of your night. Thank you very night. much. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.